Good morning, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this new webinar of the EU Cloud DLGIT Initiative, which is a um, European Commission funded uh, initiative. I'm very glad to introduce this one hour event. My name is Maria Giuffrida, uh, I'm from Trust IT. And uh, this is going to be uh, our agenda for this one hour event. Uh, we will start with a short introduction where we'll present the objectives of today's event. Then we'll, there will be a presentation of the value chain adopter workshops because basically today it's our kickoff of the value chain adopter uh, initiatives, which are groups where we are going to discuss relevant use cases for the cloud edge and IoT continuum. Um, uh, initiative and for, let's say, pushing these use cases forwards and making them actually uh, happen and become more concrete. After this presentation, where we will give you um, some details on how to enter uh, these groups, there will be uh, some uh, presentations from experts already in this field. We will highlight some of the topics. We are going to go more into details during the workshops, and then there will be a Q&A session. Um, so, um, just to remind you uh, that this is the second webinar that we organized in this initiative. This is a broader initiative funded by the Commission with the objective of bringing together uh, many people that are active in this field. Uh, more precisely, there are many projects involved, and you can see their names and the partners involved in this slide. And this is a link. In this slide, you will see a link to our previous webinar. Uh, after today, we will send you the slides and also the recording to this event, so you will be able also to catch up on the previous uh, episodes, let's say, of these events and also see again this uh, today's event. Um, so uh, before starting, just a reminder that uh, this uh, is also going to be recorded and uh, that you can interact with us uh, anytime you want by using the chat or by raising your hand, uh, if you like. Uh, also, you can interact with us uh, through um, a couple of interactive sessions that we have prepared on menti.com. So just to warm up and to wait for other people joining. Uh, I'd like to invite you to go on uh, uh, this link, www.menti.com. I will uh, write it also in the chat for everyone to go so we uh, know our uh, audience a little bit better. So you just go there and use the code you see in the slide. So I will put it also in the chat. So you can connect with our uh, online online quiz. Um, so if you can, you can share uh, the Menti uh, questions. Our first question for you guys is to let us know which country you're connecting from, so we know a little bit uh, better. So some people from Italy, Austria, Germany, Belgium. People still other people are connecting. Slovenia. This is a surprise, of course. We're focused on uh, European um, European uh, initiatives. So okay, most of the people come from here. Someone from Algeria also. Slovenia. That's nice. Germany is the majority because you see it's becoming bolder and bigger. Some of our panelists are from Germany too. Okay, so that's that's nice uh, view. We can go to the next uh, uh, question where we ask you in which field do you work? Of course, this is an event focused for people that are uh, somehow connected to Cloud Edge and IoT, but maybe you are also involved in other, in other technology. So you can also write the industry, uh, the industry where you are. Or oh, someone is yeah, working in Italy. Okay, thanks, but we mean uh, the, the type of topic you deal with every day, and also if you have um, any uh, industry, for instance, manufacturing, health, healthcare, uh, logistics, please also write it because our events that we're going to present very soon are also focused on uh, industries and sectors. So it's nice for us to know 
where, um, where you work, industry automation, we will talk about it, cloud and IoT, of course, someone from uh, marketing, blockchain as well, which is very important, and we'll have one of the speakers talking about distributed ledger technologies as well today, industry automation, okay, so that's very interesting, we will save also oh, someone from Gaia X. Uh, we will share this response, okay, also with you later and we'll collect more. Uh, last question for this warm-up uh, session is, we want to know why you attended this webinar, so what you're curious to learn that today, knowing that the premise is, of course, we're going to present opportunities to join us in later events, but if you have any uh, specific curiosity or specific um, interest, as to why you are uh, joining this webinar. Um, it's, oh, someone said, I ask you, okay, that's fair. Uh, I ask you because, because I thought, of course, it's gonna be interesting for you. So we have someone uh, that wants to learn about edge computing. We will say something, know about the trends. Uh, Golbu, right after me, will tell you some of the main trends. So that's covered, more knowledge. Okay, we will start discussing this, these topics. What is EU Cloud Edge IoT? EU Cloud Edge IoT is this umbrella initiative where we're all brought together and we try to stimulate a debate among all the players in this field, also to focus on the use cases. So we'll start mentioning use cases. That's very nice. We'll start mentioning uh, use cases and the uh, but at a, at a very high level, I must say today, uh, while the upcoming um, events that we're going to present will be more into the details of it. So thanks for your insights uh, so far. I think that's all for this initial uh, session. I see also other people are, are continuing to join. So without further ado, I will uh, leave the floor now for the introduction by Golbu, who is uh, the coordinator of one of the projects inside this umbrella, that's on Loxi. So thank you, Galbo, over to you. Thank you very much, Maria, and good afternoon, everyone. So uh, I will try to be quick to because the, the core of the webinar are the, uh, are the talk of the other speakers, but I will try to provide you an overview of the Unlock CI project and then uh, some uh, initial, let's say, some uh, big picture insights about the market size, the cloud edge IoT market. So um, if we can go to the next slide, please. Um, as Maria said, Unlock is a, um, is a Horizon Europe uh, coordination and support action project uh, that basically covers the, the demand part of the uh, computing continuum. The project started uh, in June, 2022, um, uh, and uh, the duration is 30 months. Uh, we are working with uh, uh, with five other uh, organizations. So IDC coordinates, and we have VDI, uh, EGI, Blue Specs, Trust IT, and Compla uh, in this project together. Um, the main objectives of the of the Unlock CI, if we go to the next slide, um, uh, thank you. Um, that there are basically five main objectives that we are following in in the project. Um, so the first one is to assess and analyze the situation of the cloud edge IoT demand landscape. So to understand that how is the market, what are the market trends, what is the forecast of the more of the demand market in the um, in cloud edge IoT, and this is something that I will also briefly address uh, during my talk today in one two slides. Uh, but more information and more insights on this will come during the value chain adopters workshop that uh, that Inessa uh, will later on explain. Um, then uh, the second objective of Unlock is to define market scenario and guidance. So to basically identify what are the main service requirements and what are the main uh, scenarios and path in order to uh, basically reach uh, to the to the adoption of the of the uh, use cases for cloud edge IoT. Um, then the third objective is to building uh, and activating a, a, a constituency of uh, industrial, basically, industrial constituency, because we are focusing on the demand of the cloud edge IoT, so to bringing together the industrial stakeholders in this field and just understanding and discussing together the better the requirements um, and uh, the doing a, a sort of deep dive, especially at the level of the use cases. 
Um, the fourth objective is to coordinate and interact with the supply side, because uh, as a European funded project, we are also going to provide support to the technology providers in Europe who are providing their technologies and their solutions to the demand market. And so the aim is to bring this insight that we are creating and generating during the Unlock project into the supply side as well. And uh, eventually also um, raising awareness and create impact uh, in terms of the um, in terms of cloud edge IoT uh, adoption and um, and uh, deployment. Um, I, I will uh, very briefly uh, um, describe and present to you um, and the results of some analysis that we did so far uh, within the Unlock project. So if we can go to the next slide, we can see that. Um, Basically, um, Cloud Edge IoT is becoming a core part of the technology infrastructure. Uh, these three pieces, Cloud Edge and IoT, are interlinked technology domains that uh, are jointly enabling a wide range of new use cases. And, and these new use cases basically are going to enable and accelerate the digital transformation that we are uh, currently uh, following in Europe. So these technologies, all of them, are in a phase uh, of accelerated adoption in the market. Um, currently, European organizations' investment in cloud edge IoT is increasing. Uh, here are the results of the of the first phase of the research that we did within the Unlock project. So we can see that seventy eight percent of the EU companies use cloud, um, and seventy seven percent plan to invest in the IoT use cases. And uh, and these figures uh, basically are expected to grow in the upcoming years. But what is important here to focus and to, to pay attention is that. Um, we expect a, a, a more a, a more rapid growth in terms of the edge market, since many of these use cases will be moved to the edge, and they require, let's say, um, the edge uh, capabilities in order to be implemented. And that's why that we, well, as we can see here, the the total spending of edge during 2022 was 36 billion euros in Europe, but. Uh, our forecast shows that uh, there will be a um, basically a compound annual growth rate at least for the next five years of around 15 percent per year uh, for investment in edge in Europe. And so th this shows that basically uh, it's going to be a lot of opportunities for um, for European players uh, in the edge market. Um, and when we go to the next slides, we can see that basically the, the reason of so much opportunities, as I said, is because many of uh, many of the use cases uh, will require computing at the edge. Um, uh, they will they will benefit uh, and uh, from this. And there are different uh, you know sectors who will benefit from this manufacturing, energy utilities, transportation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and the capabilities uh, that will be, uh, let's say, uh, enabled through this shift are, are diverse. The use cases are diverse. Here you can see some of the uh, relevant use cases per sector. Um, in Unlock, we are focusing on these five sectors, the five verticals that you can see in these slides. This is like manufacturing, energy, transportation, agriculture, and healthcare. And uh, here you can see uh, some of the most relevant use cases per vertical. The, the, as you can see, they are diverse. You know, it's from real-time supply chain monitoring to inventory management to remote asset monitoring to drone-based inspection, for instance, energy, which is which is uh, continuously increasing in terms of importance. Uh, so, so they are quite, you know, uh, um, very wide in term in terms of the use cases and. Um, um, we also did in the in the first phase of the research. If we go to the next slide, we have the results of the uh, analysis um, in terms of the uh, edge solution types or edge use cases, which are the most important uh, for the organization. So these are the the responses that uh, have been received from the organizations in terms of the key edge solutions that they consider important. Um, and again, here we can see that, um, that there are there are several several uh, edge solutions that 
but, but they are basically very much, if you talk about manufacturing, they're focused on process uh, automation, they're process on optimization of the processes. Um, they, they are related to predictive maintenance, for instance, um, um, intelligent monitoring, et cetera, et cetera. What we are doing now, so, so this was the first phase of the research that we did. What we are doing now is that currently in we are running a survey in Unlock Project, interviewing 700 companies uh, to identify the top three use cases per vertical. Uh, and uh, the midterm results of this survey will be presented during the series of value chain adopters workshop that later on Inessa and, and Mark will talk about it. So uh, if you are interested to, to know more about this, the, the updated uh, situation of the market, the use cases, um, we invite you to join those workshops also to get that sort of information. The, the last point that I would like to mention and if we can go to the next step, uh, we can see that is about the edge ecosystem. Just wanted to point out that, uh, again, why we are doing this, because it's important to consider that uh, also the edge ecosystem uh, is very important when we talk about the edge market and implementation, since no single player basically can provide an end-to-end -end solution. Uh, we need different types of the stakeholder in an ecosystem in order to provide a, a solution. And uh, actually, the European landscape is continuously developing. And if you compare it to, to a few years ago when building an edge ecosystem required a very complex approach, now there are different edge players in the market and there are several opportunities for European players. Since the market is still fragmented, uh, there are strong European players in the market and there are hundreds of use cases that that, that are going to be implemented uh, in the, at the edge. Um, so next slide, please. Um, so um, th this is what we are trying to do with this series of, uh, of workshop, value chain adopters workshop. So basically to build the dialogue uh, across the value chain in order to, to, to be able also to bridge the gap between supply uh, and demand side. Um, so that's it, I think. Um, uh, if any question at the end, I think I can address them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Golbu, for the introduction. Now, as mentioned, it's the turn of Inessa Siebert for the description of the value chain adopter groups. Many thanks, Maria. Many thanks, um, Golbu, for the nice introduction. Uh, you are very much welcome and uh, many thanks for your attention also for my part. So I'm talking about the value chain adopter groups. Um, next slide, please. So uh, why value chain adopter groups and why we are pursuing this approach? So as Golbu already mentioned, um, so there is no uh, customer, single customer and single service provider in edge cloud IoT continuum, but rather there are different actors and different players that are involved. And all these players um, have different requirements. And uh, so our approach uh, focuses on different domains where we try to understand uh, what kind of requirements are raised um, in, in a particular domain. So we discuss agriculture, manufacturing, healthcare, energy and utilities, and mobility and logistics. Next slide, please. So we analyze the value chains behind. Here you can see the value chain of the manufacturing domain, manufacturing sector. The players and actors involved are engineering and machine manufacturers, suppliers and service providers, uh, cloud edge IoT tech providers and IT applications. And of course, uh, the final customer would be a manufacturing company that produces the cars. Um, so we see different parts of industries that are involved in uh, value chains such as electrical industry, machinery and metal processing. And of course, um, in Germany, the most uh, powerful automotive industry um, that all belong to the value chain and all contribute with their 
requirements uh, regarding the services and uh, also um, play their particular role on the market. Next slide, please. So we identified in our previous research conducted by IDC, um, which demand pool drivers and especially use cases um, are particularly important for cloud edge IoT applications. Um, that would be manufacturing operations automation, smart connection, manufactured products, quality control, uh, especially based on cameras and imagery analysis, energy monitoring, of course, uh, nowadays, intelligent process control, digital twin applications, mobile assistance systems, smart building, video security and surveillance. And um, so we included uh, these topic areas um, in our registration forms for, for, for participating in the value chain adopter workshops. So uh, while you register, if you're of course interested in our work workshops, you will find these topic areas that you can select so that we can um, prepare the workshops um, and focus um, our efforts on particular topic areas. Next slide, please. Uh, so here you can see the agriculture value chain. Um, it is the same approach. So we identify the actors and major players such as suppliers, machinery, farmer, farmers for crops and livestock, IT application and hardware providers, food processing companies and suppliers, and of course, last but not least, trade and retail. It's amazing what is not happening in the agricultural domain. It's becoming more and more automated. Um, and there are specific uh, requirements regarding, for example, connectivity, since um, in rural areas, there, there, there are problems with, with um, mobile access. So next slide, please. The same here, uh, we try to focus on topics that are of particular interest for the workshop participants. Um, for example, asset equipment system maintenance and repair, animal tagging, agricultural field monitoring, visual inspection, quality integrity, of course, um, overarching topics such as video security and surveillance, process automation and uh, optimization, autonomous vehicles, and livestock monitoring. Next slide, please. Uh, in the health value chain, we identified service portals, connected medical devices and drugs, of course, connectivity, especially data exchange, data platform and data-driven applications, care providers, payers, such, for example, uh, assurance companies, and of course, the patients themselves. Um, next slide, please. Uh, also here, you can choose the demand pool drivers in the registration forms where you can focus on specific areas such as remote health monitoring, hospital asset tracking, bedside telemetry, AI enabled diagnosis and treatment systems, telemetry and telemedicine, robots, IR assisted surgery, or overetching topics. Next slide, please. The transportation, transportation value chain is um, more complex and involves uh, more act actors. So we have uh, planning and engineering companies, equipment and vehicle manufacturers, IT application platform providers, information and communication services, and of course, transport operate operators. And we have also different uh, use cases uh, that we address, like traffic management and control, travel information, booking and payment, fleet tracking, one monitoring and management, freight tracking, monitoring and management. Next slide, please. Um, here we see further domains such as autonomous vehicles, remote asset maintenance, enforcement of regulations, video detection, security and surveillance. 
Next slide, please. And also here, you can choose the topic of your interest so that we can focus our workshops on, for example, traffic management and control, passenger traffic floor, travel information, booking and payment, fleet tracking, monitoring and management, etc. So uh, the application domains are very much uh, very broad and so we address of course the interests of the workshop participants by providing these selection possibilities so um get involved um we will use the blue ocean strategy with a strategy canvas and buyer experience cycle that will be um, introduced uh, by our partner EGI. And I hope we will get valuable insights during the workshops. And now um, I want to give the word to my colleagues from EGI. And uh, the last slide are the dates of the workshops. So it's quite soon. It's already next week for manufacturing is on the 16th, um, then follows agriculture on the 17th, health is on the 10th of March, transportation will take place on the 17th of March, and the energy domain, the last domain, will be on the 23rd of March. Thanks very much, so I hand over. Thank you, Inessa, and we can go directly to Mark. Hi, Mark, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Inessa. Thank you, Goldblue. Uh, let's go to the next slide, please, and describe a little bit about how we are we will approach the each of the workshops. And so, I would encourage everyone who's joined us today to, uh, to participate in, in one or more of the workshops based on their own background. Our, our objective in these workshops is to, to assess how well the, the participants in the market, ideally the consumers, the buyers, the, 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 the sources of who have the, the organizations who have problems to solve, how they will use cloud edge IoT technology to solve those problems. We, we do not want to be theoretical. We want to be very practical. And so your own experience as a company, as an organization, uh, as a, even a public sector organization coming to the table and saying, this is what I want to do. This is what we want to look at in detail and uh, to share as much as possible some of the the nitty gritty that is you're going to be facing as you look to, to use cloud edge IoT technologies to solve a real problem. So we've identified, we've created an adoption readiness framework with five steps, five components, sections, chapters, if you will. And it's adaptable to uh, any of these different sectors and other sectors. It's also adaptable to people who play different roles in the value chain. So. Uh, we, we see this as a, as a great opportunity to assess the capability and the readiness of players in the market to, to move in this direction. Next slide, please. So our, the, the process is to understand this. It's to understand the readiness. It's, it's not only specific, but it's also strategic. So we will balance your organizational readiness. We will look at your uh, your own use case readiness in terms of your understanding of, of what it is you want to accomplish and understanding of, of how this might be achieved. And it will look specifically about solutions, about the impact or the implications of those solutions on your own uh, organizational approach, as well as how you may combine services from the market or that are being developed by uh, R&D, our research and innovation projects. And then finally, we will put this in the context of the of uh, the uh, situation where we are, um, uh, where you 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 may want to do some things that are strategic. They may not pay off tomorrow, but they have strong strategic benefits. So we'll identify those those benefits. Next slide, please. Our methodology, as mentioned before, is going to build a lot on the Blue Ocean strategy, specifically the buyers adoption readiness framework. And um, 
We will uh, balance that with some other methodologies that ad address organizational readiness, as well as the, the general ecosystem capabilities. So next slide, please. The sequence is to first look at technical readiness. Now, this is the, this is the place where everyone starts. Um, it's really part of organizational readiness, but we'll talk specifically about technical readiness because this is where people usually come to the come to the meetings wanting to talk about. So we're going to dive right into that. Organizational readiness is more generally about the 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 position of your organization in terms of the digital transformation or digital uh, maturity life cycle. So we'll look at that in a bit. The use case readiness is the specific situation, the specific problem that you are looking to solve. So. As an organization, you may be, shall we say, uh, maybe you're just sort of halfway ready for these new technologies. But for, there may be a particular use case that is super important for your organization. And there you are ready to make an investment tomorrow and you're trying to figure out what to do. Or conversely, you may be looking at something that's uh, much more future thinking, forward thinking, and, and we want to explore that with you. Once we understand the use case, we want to consider what the impact of that use case will be in terms of your own adoption journey. Is the technology ready? Is, do you have suppliers in mind? Do you have customers who will benefit from this particular use case? What are the specific benefits? And this is where the, the, the Blue Ocean strategy comes in. What are the specific benefits that you expect to achieve or create based on this use case? And then finally, we want to put this in the position or the overall context of the strategic environment, doing a SWOT strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats analysis along several different dimensions. So we'll capture this in a structured way so that we're able to compare. We want to be able to compare all the apples and oranges and bananas that are out there in terms of different use cases. Uh, and put them in a common uh, common situation. I mean, for example, uh, Inessa talked about bedside telemetry in healthcare. What does this mean for the different players, for an insurance company, for a patient, for a, a hospital, for a doctor? They're all going to have different views on their own readiness and interest in working with bedside telemetry data. And even if they're very interested, they may not be ready. So we want to capture that and put it into context. So next slide, please. So again, another, another view of this, what is the technology understanding? What is the market understanding? How, how well is the use case uh, understood by the participants and how would we design it? And then put this in, in the total ecosystem context. And, and our objective is to, is to take all of these individual situations that we talk about in the, work, work, uh, the workshops and to bring them together into a total market picture so that we can talk about scenarios, market pathways, uh, uh, get an idea of how the market will develop and where there may be some gaps. And this is the part that we're, we hope to identify the situations that are holding people back. What do we do about that? And how can we make recommendations, not only to industry associations, but also to uh, the European Commission and, and other government entities? Next slide, please. I think this might be the last. Yes. So that's a quick overview and uh, uh, of of us, and we'll move on to the next slide. And I I open this the uh, the the floor up to Tom. Yeah, uh, Mark. Thanks. Before giving the word to Tom, uh, I just wanted to ask you a question uh, that came into the chat. Uh, you mentioned the blue ocean strategy. So for those people in the audience who are not totally familiar with it, if you can say a few words of what we mean by blue ocean strategy. Sure, uh, happy to do that. This is a, there's a, uh, a book called Blue Ocean Strategy that was, it was uh, written by a couple of INSEAD professors. I think it was about oh, 10 or 15 years ago now at this point. Uh, Renee Kim and uh, I forget her first name, but Maborn is the second author, both professors at INSEAD. Oh, there we go. Anessa is doing some show and tell. Uh, so I strongly recommend it. It really changed the way uh, many uh, changed the way many organizations thought about strategy uh, and offered some new opportunities and has some great tools 
including the buyer's experience journey and the, and the uh, strategy canvas to, to think about not just things in a big kind of market-based, you know, big picture view, but to think about practically in terms of a, a company trying to sell a service and companies wishing to buy a service, where does the real value get created and how do we maximize that value on both sides? So that's the purpose of this. Uh, that's the, the, that was the intent of that methodology, that approach. And we're building on this in our own methodology in this project. Thanks. Thanks, great. Beautiful, uh, because I, I actually was the, the, the participant asking that question. So perfect, makes a perfect bridge. And also I like it because we are a lot involved in, in blue blue economy and, and ocean-based solutions. So it's a coincidence that this actually also carries that uh, name. So thank you and welcome all. And thanks also for the invitation, Maria. Um, my presentation, I will try to make it uh, digest, but it's way more technical. Um, so I'm representing uh, Alliance for Internet and edge computing innovation. So we are way more in, um, in, in the network and the implementation of things. And that's why my presentation is way more uh, technical than earlier was more business perspective. But I will try to uh, explain to the audience today what is exactly um, when we speak about the computing continuum between cloud edge and IoT, why actually this is finally one of the momentums where blockchain and DLT are actually the enabler of this continuum. Um, and also, I will try to uh, enlighten you on why you all are part of this Web3 uh, decentralized internet uh, by talking about Cloud Edge and IoT. So next slide, please. So uh, yeah, next again. So um, yeah, so one of our main um, main focus areas is actually about the place of IoT as an engine in, uh, in convergence of, of, of different technological elements because there still is a perception of IoT being like about sensors and networks in a very, you know, an isolated place. Well, actually um, it is not because it's actually everything because when we think about data sets and ledgers and, and, and algorithms, they're also things so when you define the thing, uh, it becomes an internet of everything, actually, the whole, the whole space. And blockchain and distributed ledger, uh, which I refer to as DLT, is actually one of the things in the internet of things. Now, how this actually enables that computing continuum is, very, is with one of the functional implementations, a technical thing, actually, uh, what we refer to as trust, trust anchors. I cannot go too deep in this, but is actually... Um, you can only speak about the continuum if there is a trust between the different uh, mediums. Um, while you have data sourced from the IoT or edge or cloud, all these mediums or the business entities using this federated space will need to have a trust of the integrity of these data between the different mediums. And that's exactly where um, blockchain DLT implementation, what we refer to as trust anchors, it comes into the picture because um, and it's also very, very rapid. It's actually, it allow on the machine economy to, uh, to have an evidence of trust at the speed of a checksum, which is basically at a microsecond. Uh, so trust by, uh, by design is something what uh, DLT brings to this uh, cloud edge IoT computing continuum. And uh, I'm very happy to, to be the, the one explaining this here because it's definitely one of the things where everyone now talks about this continuum and everyone in the same moment also considers like blockchain something being in a corner um, or DLT, but it's definitely not. This is an enabling technology and is definitely also now in place to enable the computing continuum with data integrity as one of the uh, main elements which it bring to the picture and not only uh, next slide please my uh, to nail it actually and to make the bridge with the web3 accelerator so this is one of our uh, main uh, priorities in AOTI this year actually in um, in the preparation for EU presidency which will have a focus on uh, web3 in 2024 
Um, and we tend to enable the deployment of stakeholders in that next uh, reality of, uh, of, of a decentralized internet, which is actually also the cloud edge IoT uh, infrastructure. When we, speak, when we speak about this, we literally also speak about this decentralized internet, where again, uh, DLT is the enabler, like I said before. Um, and how this is done, and I really would, um, we will uh, in these value chain adopter groups will definitely also have somewhere a momentum where these things can be more and properly elaborated on the specific use cases. Um, but just to give a, a little insight how this technically works is that actually every medium, let it be the cloud, the edge, the IoT, or even moving mediums or users, they are connecting to this um, federated space with, with wallets. So even DeFi devices have wallets. That's one of the of these principles. And then these wallets, by definition, with mathematical certitude, have a secure connection to a common ledger. And then this ledger, like I said earlier, brings trust to the continuum. So that's in a nutshell, in a few steps. I hope it's digest enough um, how this actually uh, all connects together. And another, I think, way or as interesting element is the fact that there's another element in DLT, um, which will actually be a driver of uh, business models. So it's a pity we don't have uh, an hour more to elaborate on this, but we'll definitely have this in the value chain adopter groups because uh, having these data sharing mechanisms in place, uh, having trusted data sharing mechanisms in place is very much a driver for business models. And on top of that, we'll also have automated um, business models in these value chains. Uh, let it be around data quality, let it be around interoperability uh, as a service. So there's a whole lot of automation and IoT definitely brings these things to the, to the table. So I'm very much looking forward to our follow-ups in these uh, value chain adopter groups. And between now and then, or just any time, I also invite you to connect with me over uh, over LinkedIn or reach out to Maria or whatever we can set up, uh, whatever is needed. And I welcome you all to this uh, Web3 reality. Uh, and I hand over the ball to you, Maria. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you very much, Tom. Happy, happy to take uh, questions also if they would rise. Uh, yeah. Thank Thanks you. For for the reminder, um, anybody who has a question, you can just type it in the chat. We'll have also a few minutes at the end of the event. Thanks for this connection also with DLT and, as you mentioned, many other enabling technologies that can support the realization of the uh, digital continuum on cloud edge and IoT. This uh, is one, let's say, of the viewpoints and perspectives, but it can be many more that we can share at the workshops. Um, I will now leave the floor to Hauke Timmerman for a last presentation of this webinar on uh, use cases. Um, and thanks again to all the speakers so far. So Hauke, it's your turn now. You can uh, um, turn on your mic and camera and start. Uh, thank you, Maria. Yes, let me give you a short overview about um, the results of a study that uh, the Eco Association conducted, um, or the, the um, ICT Media had, um, conducted just uh, last year um, about the uh, Rheinisches Revier, which is a region in North Rhine-Westphalia. I'm Hauke Timmermann from the Association of the Internet Industry, and these are a few of the findings that we that we um, um, generated through this study. Uh, next slide. Mm. Yes, um, one of the theses that that we we found that. And we think that we have to that everybody has to rethink data logistics um, and um, here's an example for this we um, we are very much very close connected to the uh, DKIX Frankfurt which is, which is uh, one of the largest internet exchanges in the world and which offers peering services and this um, this um, internet exchange has a uh, usually uh, well, just measure the peak traffic of 18.77 uh, terabit per second, and um, for an example, for example, uh, an, a modern car has uh, built in about fifty CPUs, and um, um, 
and produces about one terabyte of data per day. So we think uh, that that um, our uh, networks um, actually couldn't handle uh, the, the traffic because uh, the 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 DKIX as the, one of the largest internet exchanges would be blocked by just one million cars using using um, uh, that they transport their data to to a hyperscale data center in Frankfurt and. Uh, this is just one domain case that that would utilize these these networks. So we think uh, that uh, data should be processed where it's produced, and um, this is, I think, one ex uh, of the examples that that um, um, that a good reason why why we should um, um, uh, really uh, create um, edge um, edge computing uh, and 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 handle the data on a decentralized. Um, Basis and so next slide. Uh, I skipped the, the the domains. I think we've heard about the the, the different domains and uh, maybe we do the next slide. Um, we um, have identified uh, identified twenty use cases um, 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 that will utilize um, um, edge um, computing in the future and and that will drive growth. And um, I think. Uh, a lot of these these use cases have in common that that for the, that that here AI um, or AI applications act as a driver for the cloud. So these um, 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 these uh, you, um, these cases utilize cloud services for, for example for combining data from different sources to generate enough data for AI algorithms. So they need actually cloud services, but um, they also have in common that uh, the data is actually generated on the edge and, and has to be um, processed there as well. So that's that's one of the findings. Next slide. And um, as I already marked, one of the use cases uh, from, the, from the production industry or from the manufacturing industry, um, we, we have a, a project in, um, which is called Service Meister, which tries to create something like an like a, an Alexa for the for the blue color worker, which means um, we're trying to help um, service technicians doing their work on um, complex machinery and production plants. And um, one of the use cases is actually from the company Krone, which is um, producing mass flow meters, electromagnetic radar and pressure. Um, sensors in the <clears throat> processing workloads of sensitive data for critical infrastructure, like, for example, water supply, oil and gas, but also nuclear pl power plants. And they um, you, they they are um, at the moment still processing all the data on premise, or to, due to security reasons. But they're working this project also for uh, um, on a case uh, where they where they try to uh, try to create digital twins for for their production facilities, but also for larger networks of um, uh, critical infrastructure um, and companies. So they actually need um, um, need a, a data centers that 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 are close by to to um, to ensure that 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 they are. Um, that the latency that they need for the applications is um, is low enough to to generate all the data in time and um, yeah we are very very happy that, that this this is one of the examples um, um, where where AI is actually com combined with these um, edge technologies and um, yeah uh, these um, these this data but later will be combined to. To, in, in the cloud to uh, to generate larger data pools for for other um, AI applications. Uh, next slide. Um, so we think actually that um, that the um, the cloud uh, the edge has a large potential uh, to to close the gap uh, between the on-premise applications and the cloud applications, with, which both will be necessary, but. Um, we think that's uh, due to the fact that uh, almost 80% of data is generated by edge devices. It should be processed locally and decentralized. And um, as I said before, the data transport capacity is not available for the for the data that will be have to that we have to handle in the future or that this traffic of data and um, the latency re requirements um, pose limitations on how far we can actually send data. So there's for for example for um, for reaction time or, or latency of 20 milliseconds, 
uh, we can't go further than a 20 kilometers radius from the actually from the from the, um, the from where the data is generated and where it will be processed so we have to uh, actually create a, um, a network that is that is close enough to 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 gap these uh, short distances so um uh, the lesser we have to transport the data and the more decentralized um, the more resilient the system will also be and also this um, has sustainability reasons because also also the the energy that is reduced uh, and that is used to to transport data um, can be limited by these uh, decentralized systems in which also adds to the fact that the, they are more sustainable and for everybody who hasn't seen um, next slide, um, uh, how an, an edge data center looks actually, but these are different variations of, of the theme. Basically, it, it can be a small rack like the, like the left, um, uh, like on the left side with just a few um, rack spaces uh, up to uh, um, a really larger data center up to mega, uh, four megawatts, which uh, with a lot of racks inside. So these the, the variations are very very large, but from really small um, uh, uh, devices to 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 larger data centers that um, can handle this data on on, on on short distances. So yeah, thank you very much. This was a short impulse from my side. L last slide, um, uh, and um, yeah, feel free to connect. Yes, this is a. Um, my LinkedIn profile, if you want to connect, and um, yeah, happy to answer the questions now. And um, thank you for your attention. Thank you, thank you very much, Auke, for your presentation. We are basically at the end of the event. I remind our audience again that you can uh, write any questions uh, you may have. In order to stimulate a little bit more you uh, in um, interacting with us, we have also a last uh, very quick uh, interactive session on the website again that I will um, put again in the chat. You can go on menti.com and use this time another code. Again, let me type it here. Um, So for you know some uh, final final questions on uh, what you think or what you heard. So if you had to describe with three words uh, the main benefits of cloud edge and use cases that we're gonna discuss also uh, later on, what would you uh, suggest? Efficiency, green, green economy. Yeah, that's one of the benefits. Practice, new business. Okay, of course, it's a business opportunity. It opens up for sure. Efficiency is being voted by more people because it becomes larger. Asset tracking, resilience, remote monitoring. Yeah, that's that's all um, good insights. We have to see how to how to uh, actually uh, make these benefits happen. Why the, the use cases? But they are, uh, that's all positive. Um, security, yeah, and we mentioned with uh, with Tom that trust and security can be also guaranteed by other technologies, remote monitoring and services, tracking, yeah, it also depends on the sectors where you are. Yeah, so you already identified many benefits. We hope uh, we will demonstrate by the use cases, but uh, there may also be uh, challenges. So what do you think will be the main challenges? that you have seen maybe in your industrial reality or that you can imagine based on what we presented so far. So your uh, inputs on the challenges, it's very important to share because during the workshops, maybe we can discuss on 
how to overcome uh, these challenges if there's anybody um, among the participants that maybe has overcome already the challenge can provide an idea or a solution complexity lack of skills yeah that's that important as an emerging uh, domain latency cost yeah, I don't know if any of my colleagues want to comment on this, but yeah, I think these are all uh, relevant. Oh, there is also the real business case. That's actually what we're aiming at finding and uh, working on in, uh, in the workshops. So finding real concrete or potentially close to market business cases also via the uh, framework that Marx has presented, trying to assess how many of these business cases are actually real. And also I see standards as an important, as an important element uh, being mentioned. Of course, it's, it's very relevant for integration, for interoperability, etc. So we, we uh, will discuss all this and we hope to give you insights on how to overcome these challenges. Uh, before closing, uh, just really uh, very, very few uh, questions on your preferences. So based on what we discussed, what do you think should be priority topics to bring uh, to the table in these five uh, vertical sectors that I have uh, shared with you in the chat? So we may take your priority topics into consideration if you then attend uh, the events. So if there's anything you would like us to go deeper into the details, you can write it um, here in this slide. Or if you wanna think about it more, you can also send us uh, an email. Let me write also our contact here. Oh, climate efficient implementations. We'll take note of this. Maybe in some of the workshops we can uh, uh, touch this. Anything else? So let's give a few minutes for people to, to write real business cases in industries. Yeah, that's that's the uh, our aim, green IT. Okay, so uh, along the way of uh, sustainability, green optimization of energy, we have a, a, a um, vertical on, on energy. So we'll, we will try to touch this uh, in that uh, event uh, specifically. So since that there's only one minute left, let's go to our last uh, uh, last question. So uh, please let us know if you are planning to attend one of more of our workshops. You can uh, vote which ones of the uh, topics you prefer. Okay, so healthcare. Uh, okay, all of them for now. Um, So we have, oh, okay. I don't see the, the slide anymore. Okay, but we saw a few people voting already on uh, basically all of them. If you have any preference, however, um, let us know, we will circulate the links. So I've, I've heard a comment by Basim that the URLs are not available. Thanks for, for telling us. We will send an email, a uh, follow-up email to all the people who were registered, attending live today, and also registered um, in this webinar with the links uh, so that you can register for the workshops, upcoming workshops, okay? So it's easier if we send them maybe by email because in the chat they uh, could disappear again. Um, so it's 4 p.m. Uh, we approach the end of, of this event. Um, if there is no question or comment or suggestion or anything, I would really like to thank you um, very much for being here. 
and uh, hope you will join us uh, in our uh, events. Just as a reminder, the first one will be on the 16th of February, then we will have 17th of February, and then some others in March, one per sector. Uh, you can also mm, be in touch with us and the overall initiative in many more ways. And here you will find our contacts for uh, asking questions, but also to follow us on our social media channels and then also the link to register again for the workshops. Uh, thank you all for joining and uh, we will send information about the recordings, the slides and the registration link via email later today or maximum by uh, tomorrow. Yeah, the recording, Joe, will be available uh, within 24 hours. Uh, thank you very much uh, again uh, to both our speakers and our audience, and I wish you a um, nice um, continuation of uh, this day.